Hi there. After understanding the basics of uh, mathematical economics and mathematics, now let us shed light on the difference between the mathematics and non-mathematical economics. We will try to see that how this uh, tool of uh, uh, mathematics can help us in economics. So the other type of economic analysis or study is literary economics. One is the mathematical economics and the other is literary economics or non-mathematical economics. Both are basically approaches to studying economics. None of them is a branch of economics. This is something we should be clear of. However, mathematical economics is our focus. This is the approach or language or the way in which we are going to study economics. What we do is that in our mathematical economic analysis, we use symbols, equations, which are used to represent the assumptions and the conclusions instead of using the words and sentences. Let us take an example. We uh, in microeconomics as well as in microeconomics, we study the consumption function and on the basis of that we also have the marginal propensity to consume that is MPC. Now this MPC as we know uh, shows us the tendency of our consumption on the basis of additional income. It is either uh, all of it that we have uh, got as initial or additional income or none of it that is we consume sometimes we consume all of it or we consume none of it or we can consume a little bit of it this basically shows us the range of the consumption that we do on the basis of additional income now in instead of saying it in a uh, cert certain number of words i can write this it shows that marginal propensity to consume ranges from 0 to 1 that is 0 percent till 100 percent so this is a simple uh, expression in which we have expressed the phenomenon of marginal propensity to consume another conclusion that we can get primarily we understood the assumption and now we are getting the conclusion is the multiplier that we can calculate under the Keynesian macroeconomic theory that the investment multiplier which is expressed with k subscript i is basically the ratio of the change in national income divided by change in investment when we take their ratio we get a certain answer and that answer basically tells us about the investment multiplier so that's a conclusion that we have drawn but in quantitative terms by using some symbols and applying a little bit of algebra so mathematics here again is resolving quite a bit of lengthy things into smaller things theorems in mathematical economics yes we study them and we know that a theorem is a mathematical expression that is developed with the help of symbols and formula uh, an example of theorem would be envelope theorem that we apply in the production theory and auction theory another uh, identity is used from mathematics which is known as Roy's identity and it is applied to marginal demand function one is Shefford lemma a lemma that we use where lemma is a subsidiary of an overall theorem a smaller part of it Shefford lemma is there and it can help us to understand the relationship between expenditure function and the Hicksian demand function so this is another economic application of the theorems in mathematical economics the benefits of using mathematical economics they are there and we have seen that uh, if we use the mathematical economics it is uh, going to use some symbols and it is a very convenient way of uh, using the deductive reasoning where deductive reasoning is about when we have two uh, arguments and on the basis of those two arguments we come up with another argument so that third argument or conclusion is drawn from the two arguments so this can be done by using some symbols as we will see uh, in the process of this course 
the use of symbols also increase the conciseness and the precise of statements uh, yes they are very precise statements the precision is there because we use symbols to express the variables and their relationship just like we did before in this way we express the situations in a very brief manner by using those symbols so it brings clarity and precision in our statements when we use mathematical functions we are able to include more than two economic variables which is usually not the case in theoretical economics or literary economics because we are bound uh, with um, two dimensional diagrams where there can be one independent variable here we can have more than um, two independent variables or two independent variables but we are not bound to one independent variable since we can go beyond the restrictions of two dimensional in the form of three dimensional hyperspace we can allow n number of variables so this is a significant benefit of using mathematical economics practically speaking we know that mathematical economics now is quite a bit in vogue because uh, uh, the literature of economics is now written more in mathematical terms and it is highly mathematized if we look at the professional articles um, in the um, periodicals or journals like American Economic Review, Quarterly Journal of Economics, Journal of Political Economy, Review of Economics and Statistics, and Economic Journal. All these famous journals, whenever you go through these journals, you will see a lot of mathematics because it is a concise and precise way of expressing larger things in a very brief way. So uh, it is a very applied subject when it comes to understanding the latest literature in economics. So this is how we see that how uh, mathematical economics can be very useful and effective and brief when it comes to economic theory and its understanding. Thank you.